Welcome back Raider Nation and my champions. This is Eric and we're going to be covering the Monday Night Tilt against the Chargers and I'm going to tell you why I believe this will be our toughest challenge to date and I'm going to give you the four keys to victory to get us to 4-0. Let's get right to it. The other team's quarterback must go down and he must go down hard. Now, while we do start on the defensive side of the ball, we do go over the injury report and we had to wait an extra day since we play on Monday Night Football. We had to wait till Saturday to get this final injury report out. And as far as the Raiders go, we have everybody as far as an active status with the exception of Josh Jacobs, who is listed as questionable. Now, John Gruden said he will be very questionable battling an ankle slash turf toe injury. And we'll get to that once we get to the offensive side of the ball. Same thing here with the Chargers. They have three defensive players that are on the final injury report. We'll get to that as well once we get to that side of the ball. But I want to first talk about this Chargers offense and what this defense can do to slow it down and what they need to target here. Now, this Chargers offense is currently ranked fourth in the league in passing and 27th in rushing. So obviously, they are, they are keying in on the passing game. Very similar to ours right now. I think we're doing it more so because Jacobs has been hurt. So that's that's affected. Plus the interior offensive line, we've had issues there. They are normally built this way. So you can see Austin Eckler can uh, catch passes out of the flat here. He's normally a pass catching running back. You have Guyton and Mike Williams here who are your deep threats. And then you have Keenan Allen here, who's basically your X type possession receiver and very good at it. Another stat I want to go over regarding this Chargers offense is that they are top five in the percentage of drives that they have that result in scores. Now they're also in the top 10 in the percentage of drives that result in turnovers. So that's kind of telling me they're kind of boom or bust. The punter doesn't get a whole lot of work. So I think if we can kind of get to Herbert, he's a very athletic quarterback, more mobile than people probably give him credit for. But I think if we can get to him and disrupt him and try to get some of those turnovers, we can help slow and stop this offense. And that gets to my first key of the game. Now, obviously, I'm going to talk about Max Crosby here for a couple of reasons. Number one, Brian Laga, who was supposed to be their starting right tackle veteran, he got hurt. He's on the IR having a back procedure. In comes Storm Norton, who is the fourth worst rated offensive tackle by PFF. He's currently ranked rated at 44.7 with a 35.8 pass blocking grade. I think if anything here, this is where Crosby's going to come and feast again. I'm expecting similar numbers to when he manhandled Villanueva, where he got two sacks and eight pressures. I think this is the matchup here. Some people say Rashawn Slater is a rookie. He's doing pretty well. It's going to be interesting to see him go up against Yannick Ngakwe, a veteran type pass rusher. But I think this is the biggest matchup. We need to get that disruption on Justin Herbert. Now, the other key to the game that I came with, now, you could come to a number of these, and I said, like, Austin Eckler, when I talked about Miles Gaskin last week with the Miami Dolphins, similar type player. You could look here, Mike Williams is red hot right now, but I think with Casey Hayward on him, I think that's going to be kind of a wash, though. My second key to the game is at least slowing down Keenan Allen. Now, like I said before, and I do compare Brian Edwards to Keenan Allen, and that's a compliment because this guy is a stud. He is your ultimate X-type receiver, run all kinds of routes quicker than he is fast, but he gets the job done. And he's the kind of guy that Herbert's going to be looking at for third and eight, third and nine, coming out here. He does go over the middle, but his bread and butter is really coming out in the flat and catching these and going out of bounds past the first down marker. That's what he likes to do. He's also very dangerous in the red zone. This is a guy who last time we played in Los Angeles, torched us for nine receptions, 103 yards and a touchdown. I think with these, if we can contain Keenan Allen, slow him down, at least keep him under 100 yards and Max Crosby dominate. I'm looking for another two sack and multiple pressure game like he did in Baltimore. I think it goes a long way towards a victory. Now, before we get to the offensive side of the ball, if you are enjoying this video, why not give it a thumbs up? Also, when to subscribe, hit that bell notification to all. That'll keep you notified of all of our future videos and live streams. We do a weekly live stream at halftime. And of course, we're going to be doing it this week on Monday Night Football against the Chargers. I'm going to go over what I call the good, the bad, and the ugly of the first half. I'm also going to go over the four keys and see how we're doing against those four keys. And then get your opinion. I want to know what you think of the first half of the game. We go about 10 or 15 minutes. I have a great time. I encourage you to come and join us. Now let's get on to the offensive side of the ball. I 
hear everyone say it. Take what they give you. We're going to take what we want. And that's exactly what Derek Carr and this offense has been doing the past three weeks, taking what they want. And that has led to Derek Carr getting the Offensive Player of the Month for September in the AFC, averaging over 400 passing yards per game. I would be remiss without saying that. Congratulations. Of course, we've been a little handcuffed in the running game due to the injuries at both tackles as well as Josh Jacobs. Now, Josh Jacobs will be coming back. He is listed as questionable. I'm not sure if John Gruden is kind of playing poker here and he is good to go. He might very well be, but I'm going to tell you what, I don't think it's really going to matter because this defense is very similar to the Miami Dolphins where they're stronger in the passing side than they are in the run defense. They are currently seventh in pass defense and they are dead last in run defense giving up 510 total rushing yards in three games. That is terrible. And to be honest, I don't care if it's Josh Jacobs running the ball or Peyton Barber inside. I think that's going to be our first key is to shove it right down their throat. I'm going to say this. I mean, aside from Bosa being the good pass rusher he is, this might be the weakest front seven we have faced this year. Justin Jones is out with a calf injury. In comes Christian Covington. He's basically a backup. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, Jerry Tillery, he was a former first round pick, but he was selected as a nose tackle, a 3-4 nose tackle. He couldn't cut it. They moved him to defensive end. He is one of the worst rated defensive ends by PFF. Anyway, Nwosu, last year he had five sacks when Ingram was kind of battling injuries. That's probably one of the reasons why they let Ingram go anyway. But he has had no sacks yet. He has not been looking very well. And honestly, as far as the front seven besides Joey Bosa, I am not too impressed with what they've got there. I think we can run the ball all over these guys. Now, my second key. Now, I'm going to say it's going to be very similar to what I said about the Miami Dolphins. I think you have Asante Samuel here, another rookie stud that the Chargers picked up. He already has two interceptions. I think they're going to match him up with Ruggs. They're going to kind of bounce him between him and Waller. Those are the two top weapons. Of course, uh, Adderley and Derwin James are going to be drawing the attention of these guys as well, not to hurt them. And that's going to leave room for these two guys here, Renfro and Edwards. And I think more so with Brian Edwards. This could be his coming out party here. Chris Harris is questionable with a shoulder injury. He he is probably going to line up against Renfro, though he'll probably play. I think we can exploit this matchup between Brian Edwards and Michael Davis. Now, I have mentioned Davis before in an earlier video. I thought uh, that Gus Bradley would have poached this guy and brought him over here during the offseason. But he ended up staying with the Chargers. Not only that, he's getting like $8 million a year. And he has not really been earning it these past three weeks. I would not be surprised if Edwards gets triple digits here in a touchdown. This could very well be his coming out party this week against the Chargers on Monday night under the big lights. Now, I'm saying this. If we can do the two keys on the defense, we can run the ball down their throat. We can win this game going away and end up 4-0. and when you have great coaches, then after you have great coaches, you get great players. You have a great organization, and you tell them one thing. Just win, David. <laughs>